Hello and welcome to the video. This is a very quick video to show you what I've been doing with these things here. Now these are the FR Sky XMR receivers and one of the things that I've been doing recently is building a lot of foam models and smaller wings with them because they're perfect for that. They're about £10 each, they're really cheap and cheerful but as you can see in this build video you have to actually direct solder the leads onto the receiver because that's really the way that it's made. Now what I've done here is I've actually been modifying them so that they have standard servo connectors and you can use them just like you use these kind of small lightweight receivers. Now I've been a big fan of things like this, these are the Orange R615Xs, love these receivers, got loads and loads of them in different places, but unfortunately the spectrum radios that I've got, the memories are starting to get quite full, so I'm moving on to a lot of more FR Sky based stuff. And these are perfect for that because they're so inexpensive you can just chuck them in pretty much anything. But for those times when you don't want to get the soldering iron out and do all that direct soldering, having the pins on it is worth its weight in gold. So I just want to show you how to do it. It's relatively straightforward and easy and I'll also make the 3D design of this case available. I'm just about to redesign it actually and put a couple of little holes in here so you can see the LEDs for binding and whatnot but let me show you what I do. The first thing that you need to do is get your hands on some header pins. Now these are really inexpensive little things. You can get them from eBay, your local hobby shop, uh, Hobby King, Banggood, all the usual places have them. If you search for something like 2.54 millimeter header triple row, you'll find them. And it's only a couple of quid and you can get loads and loads and loads of them. You want a little row of six. And these six by three header pins will become the connections for the servos. Only other thing you need here is a couple of bits of thin wire and a good soldering iron and a steady hand. Because what we're going to do is we're actually going to solder the bottom connections onto the pads of the receiver itself. That's going to handle the signal. And then we're going to have to connect the middle row of pins to the plus 5 volts at the top of this picture. And then at the bottom of the picture on the right hand side of the receiver, we're going to have to connect the very top row to ground. And that way we can plug everything in. Now the way I've designed the case and the way this works is you can actually install the header pins here uh, on either side of the receiver, it doesn't really matter and the 3D case that I've done you can uh, put it in either way, it doesn't matter. I've done it so that you can still access the bind button and there's a hole at the side for you to pop the antenna through as well. You don't have to use 3D case, you could just use a blob of hot glue to seal it or you could just put a bit of heat shrink around it as well. Both of those would work perfectly to make this little fantastically cheap receiver into something that's more useful for those models where you don't want to solder the servos and speed controllers and things to it. So now we've got that ready, then what we need to do is then strip the wires back. We need to strip about an inch and a half and twist the cores together and then wind those twisted cores in between each of the pins themselves. So here we are, we'll do the positive pins first. Positive pins should be in the middle. I just happen to be using red coloured wire here, but you could use any colour you wanted, of course. And you can see how I've just wove these strands together. And what I'm going to do is just very briefly, with the tip of a fine soldering iron, you just put a little blob of solder on each, starting at one end and then working my way along. It doesn't take much heat at all and I find that holding it in something like a blob of blue tack is very good to make sure that if you do get a little bit too much heat in the pin, the pin doesn't deform and move around in the plastic support. So that's all of the red connections or positive plus 5 volts done. Then strip the black wire, do exactly the same thing, double check that you're not bridging or you haven't got any solder connecting the two rows together but you're actually using solder to also strengthen the wire here as well. Once you've got those two bits connected it'll look like that and we're ready to solder the bottom row of pins onto the XMR receiver itself. So line it up, make sure that it's nice and secure uh, you, and again you can mount it either way. I'm doing it this way so that the bind button is at the bottom of the case. If I turned the XMR over I could have done it so that the antenna shot out the other side and the bind button was on top of the case. Either way works, you just have to remember which way you've done it. So 
bit of solder later. There it is, all together, so it didn't take too long at all. And then finally, it's a case of connecting the ground wires, which should be the pins opposite the signal pins to the ground pad on one side, and the plus five volts on the other. And at this point, then you can absolutely cover this thing in heat shrink. I'd recommend putting a blob of hot glue behind the connectors and on the top of the board just to help support this connector in the event of a crash or a little bit of a problem or a knock. For me, what I did is I went away and designed the 3D printable case and then popped it on so you can see it. Last little tip I'll give you is before you throw the little silver packet that it comes in, take a pair of scissors, cut out the bit that goes channel one, two, three, four, five, six, wise to remember which way it goes round, stick that onto the bottom of the case so that if you're making it before you need it, when you come to it, you'll know which way it is. But the tip is the pin that is nearest the antenna is always channel six, and the pins that are actually connected to the board will be the signal pins. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that like the look of this. It's a very cheap and easy way to turn a $10 receiver into something that you can plug and unplug servos into. And it's great for part flyers and those models that you don't intend pushing the range. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists, so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject, we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse. Thank <laughs> you.